Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Commending his spirit to God was Jesus' greatest teaching. Jesus teaches that putting our own lives into God's hands is the most powerful way of bringing about world change. Jesus commended his spirit to God as a culmination of a life of humility, wisdom, courage, compassion, peacefulness and selflessness. Jesus surrendered his life to serve the cause of God in the world. One of the last acts of humility that Jesus taught us was to wash the feet of his disciples. Jesus taught us that surrender means being a willing servant. Death surrenders all of us totally to God. But what about life? When used in the spiritual context of our daily lives, commending our spirit to God means surrendering our lives and striving to give up everything that serves ourselves. In post-Christian society, many people have no experience of the teachings of Jesus. Many people have no knowledge of the fact that Jesus called his disciples to participate with him in his death. This meant denying their own egos and taking up the cross daily. Many people have no idea that by emulating Christ's humble surrender, we enable God to do the inner work required to transform us, ordinary human beings, into God's likeness. Many people have no idea that by giving our lives to God, we might become like him. We Christians must not limit the power of Christ just to ourselves. Christ works in the lives of all people. The recent teachings of a religious sister compared Jesus' humble foot washing service with that of frontline health workers. She believes that they say through their actions, I choose to wash your feet. I choose to work tirelessly for you. I choose to put my own health on the line. I choose to think positively. I choose to follow government instructions. And I do this because I love you, my fellow human being. For Sister Mary Turner, God is literally kneeling down through the actions of these ordinary workers. Workers who have commended their spirit and lives to serve the greater good in the world. As Christ said, as I have done, so you must do. We all need to learn to kneel, because what we do for others, we do for Christ. In the early church, the means to achieve surrender was often taught within the enclosure of a Benedictine monastery. Those living the religious life sought to ascend each step of the ladder of humility. St Benedict says in an early Christian document that by our ascending actions we arrive at the perfect love of God and therefore perfect love of each other. This in turn leads to a peaceful life where burdens are held lightly and we are freed from harmful actions arising from our own anxiety and fear. Like Jesus, Mary his mother teaches us what it means to commend one's own spirit to God. Let it be done unto me, Mary said. Mary's own surrender literally allowed God to come and dwell in her. Whatever our work or calling, in surrender we all work on the front line for God. We actively strive for each other. In so doing, we participate in the kingdom by agreeing to God's will and action for the greater good in our own lives. Commending our spirit means that rather than praying for or wishing for situations to be changed by God or to ask God to do something for us, we pray for our own inner change. We pray that God may work in us so that we can help him change situations. When we commend our lives to God, 
God gives us the power of the Holy Spirit and we become strong enough to work for good by stepping away from self-interested greed, prejudice, violence and negativity. Humanity doing this collectively manifests God's power in society, creating space for gratitude, peace and unconditional love. In recent centuries, the focus of Jesus' death on the cross as God's only means of redemption has seemingly limited God's power. It seems that God's power is only active in the lives of a diminishing number of baptised and practising Christians. Today, 2,000 years after Jesus' own surrender, we see that Christ is bigger than the church. We see what surrender looks like for ordinary people who may not believe. Yet the action and will of God shines forth in their lives. Today, the willingness of frontline workers to suffer for the good of others shows that humanity lives in the power of Christ's spirit and does so for the greater good and for the cause of God in the world. The message of personal sacrifice and surrender represented by the cross is good news for us all. Today we see that surrendering the human spirit for the greater good saves lives on the front line. The coming Easter message is that the spirit of Christ lives and we are all citizens in God's kingdom.